Hello super nerds and noob users, are you excited? Today we're gonna implement a joystick to our game to control our play with. Yay! We need to create a joystick object and both update its state every update period of the game and also draw it to the screen. Then we implement the joystick logic which will let us maneuver the player. Let's start by initializing the variable joystick to a new joystick object. Create a joystick class and a joystick field. Go to the draw method and write joystick.draw and add the draw method to the joystick class. Then go to the update method and write joystick.update and add the update method to the joystick class. Now it's time to get the joystick to render to the screen. Go to the joystick class and create a constructor by writing public joystick with an empty head and body. So how do we model a joystick? If we look at this PlayStation controller, it looks like a good 2D projection of a joystick would be two circles. The inner circle will act as a stick which is connected to the actuator of the joystick and the outer circle will act as a boundary for how far the actuator can be pulled. Some nerds may say, uh -uh, this is not a joystick, this is actually a thumbstick. Yes, well, I didn't know this before I started recording, so, but we will call it a joystick in this episode. Let's start creating these circles. We initialize the variable outer circle center position x and set it to where we want the center position of the joystick to be. We also do the same thing for the y position and add the center position in x and y to the constructor's head. Then we copy and paste the outer circle variables and change the name from outer to inner circle. Then declare all variables as ints, since the position will refer to pixel values on the screen. We now have the position of the circles defined, but we also have to decide the radius for each circle. Write outer circle radius equals outer circle radius, and inner circle radius equals, yeah, inner circle radius. Add the variables as fields and also add input arguments to the constructor's head. Also, add the this keyword to the field variables to distinguish them from the input arguments. The last property we need for the rendering of the joystick is a paint object for the circle. Start with the outer circle paint and initialize it to a new paint object and add it as a field. Then set the color by calling set color and pass in a color by writing color.gray. This is another way of supplying colors instead of using XML references as we have done in the last episode. I actually think it's more elegant to use XML references, but I wanted to show you an alternative way of doing it. We also set the style of the paint by calling set stroke and pass the paint.style.fill and stroke enum to the method. Then copy and paste the paint modifications and do the same for the inner circle. Now it's time to implement the rendering logic. Go to the draw method and add a canvas object to the input argument and call canvas.drawCircle. Pass in the outer circle position in X and Y, the radius and the paint object. Copy and paste the draw circle method and change the variables from the outer to inner circle. Before we run the application to see our new object, we need to change the input argument to the joystick's constructor in the game class. Supply the X and Y position you want to have for the joystick, as well as the outer inner radii of the circles. Excuse me Alexander, but what is a radii? Well, uh, a radii is like uh, if you have many radiuses, capish? Okay, now we run the app and see the gray circle is getting drawn to the screen. We want to have another color for the inner circle to make it visible. So we change the color to blue. And we also change the Y position for the joystick. Then run the app and now we see our joystick is getting drawn just as we want it to be. Did you think we're done already? Mwah, we're not even close. Let's continue with handling the on-touch event for the joystick. We want to check if the joystick is pressed down before we do anything. So we write if joystick dot is pressed and to decide this we will need to supply the touch positions to the is pressed method. So we copy and paste what we used in the player dot set position method. If the joystick is pressed we want to keep track of this by setting a boolean is pressed variable to true. So we write joystick dot set is pressed and pass true as argument. Then we want to handle the event when the joystick is first pressed down and then moved. We can check if the joystick is pressed by writing an if statement and calling joystick dot get is pressed, which will return the boolean is pressed. This will only be true if the joystick was pressed in the action down case. So if the joystick is both pressed and moved, we want to set the actuator of the joystick based on where on the screen the user moves its finger. 
so we can just copy and paste what we passed into the player.setPosition method. Finally, we want to handle the event when the user lets go of the joystick. We therefore use the motion event.action up case and start by setting the is pressed variable to false. Then we want to reset the position of the actuator by calling joystick.resetActuator. That's it! Now the event handling is done and it's time to implement the joystick's methods that we want to call. We will start by implementing the isPressed method. We change the input arguments names to touchPositionX and touchPositionY. First, we think about what we want to return. We know that the joystick is pressed if the user presses down anywhere inside the outer circle of the joystick. We can formulate this as a boolean expression where we return true if the joystick center to touch distance, that is, the distance from the center of the joystick to the place where the user touches the screen, is less than the outer circle radius. We can declare the joystick center to touch distance as a field of type double, and then start calculating the value. We want to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this problem, so we take the square root of the sum of the outer circle's center position in x, minus the touch position in y to the power of 2, plus the outer circle center position in y, minus the touch position in y to the power of 2. Oh, the Pythagorean theorem! I know everything about the Pythagorean theorem! Maybe some of the nerds will say. But for everyone else, I will leave a link in the description if you need to brush up your Pythagorean theorem skills. Now, we go back and look for the next method to implement. Hit Alt Return and create method set is pressed. We change the argument name to is pressed and write this dot is pressed and create a field for the variable and then set it equal to the input argument is pressed. We can then copy the whole method and create a get method where we simply return the value of is pressed. Now it's time to implement the set actuator method. What we want this method to do is to set the actuator's x and y values such that the radial value of the actuator is in the range of 0 and 1, where 0 means that we are not pulling anything on the joystick, and 1 means that we are pulling the joystick as far as we can in one direction. So what we first want to do is to use the touch position in x and y, together with the outer circle center position in x and y, to calculate the distance from the center of the joystick to where the user presses down on the screen. We start by calculating how far away we are from the joystick center in both x and y directions and call these relative distances for delta x and delta y. We calculate delta x as the touch position x minus the outer circle center position in x. Then we do the same thing for the delta y and change the variables from x to y. After this step, we can calculate the delta absolute distance by using the Pythagorean theorem in the same way as was done in the isPressed method. What I realized now when recording is that this calculation is the same as for the joystick center to touch distance, so it would probably be a good idea to extract out both of these calculations and create a separate utility method for calculating the distance between two points. But now I have already recorded everything, so we'll change this in a future code review video. Back to the set actuator method. We now know how far away we have pulled the stick of the joystick, but we do not know how many percent of the actuator's range this corresponds to. To calculate this, we have to divide the calculation into two cases. The first case is when the delta distance is less than the outer circle radius. We then know that the actuator in x will be equal to the delta x distance divided by the length of the outer circle radius. We here measure how far we have pulled the joystick and divide by the total distance between the center of the joystick and its border. And we also do the same thing for the y direction. This calculation will always work when the delta distance is less than the outer circle radius. But when the delta distance is larger than the outer circle radius, we have to instead divide by the delta distance, since when the actuator is at its largest value, we cannot increase it anymore. This reasoning and calculations are best understood by studying vector normalization. I leave a link in the description. The last method in the joystick class that we need to implement is the reset actuator method, where we will simply set the actuator in x and y to zero. I know that all of these method implementations must have been hard to understand at a first glance, and especially if it was a long time since you did some math. 
but these kind of calculations are used very frequently in almost all geometrical calculations and it's a good skill to have if you want to become a game developer. So if you struggle through this, you can pat yourself on your back and run the app to see what we have accomplished. Ha! We have accomplished nothing. No, don't worry. We just forgot to update the state of the joystick. Go to the update method of the joystick and call the method update inner circle position. Then implement the method and update the inner circle center position x to the integer rounded number you get when adding the outer circle center position x and the actuator x times the outer circle radius and do the same thing for the position in y. What we do here is that we start from the outer circle center position and draw a vector in the direction of the actuator where the actuator decides how many percentages of the outer circle radius we move outwards in x and y coordinates. Now we can run the app again and see that we can move the joystick. But the player isn't moving yet, so we have to connect the joystick to the player. What we want to do is to update the player's position based on the actuator of the joystick. So head over to the player class and add the joystick as input argument to the update method. Here we start by declaring variables for the player's velocity in x and y directions. Then the velocity in x is calculated by getting the joystick's actuator value in x and multiplying it with the max speed we want our player to have. We do the same for the velocity in y and then we update the position in x by adding the current velocity in x and we also do the same for the position in y coordinates. We must then implement the getActuatorX method which will return actuator x and we copy and paste the method and change it to return the actuator in y. Finally, we declare the max speed constant. We want this constant to represent how many pixels we will move the player for each update in the game loop. What we can do is to create a new constant called speed pixels per second, which will specify how many pixels the player will be able to move each second. And then, to convert from pixels per second to pixels per update, we can divide by the max UPS constant from the game loop class. If we do a unit analysis of the quantities of the numerator and denominator, we see that we have pixels per second in the numerator and updates per second in the denominator. If we convert the division to a product by multiplying the numerator by the inverse of the denominator, we see that the seconds cancel out and we're left with pixels per update. It's always good to do a unit analysis as a sanity check to be sure that we arrive at the quantity that we want. We're almost done now, but we need to give public access to the max UPS constant so we can access it. And we also need to declare and initialize the speed pixel per second constant. Just try some values and you will find a speed that works for you. Then go to the game class and add the joystick as an input argument to the player's update method. Now we're completely done. Hit run and call your mother because now it's showtime. See how smooth it is. We could perform quantum surgery with this joystick, I can tell you. As usual, we need to commit our changes to git. So open up git bash and do the usual thing. We add our changes, create a new commit with the message joystick and push our changes to github. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write them in the comment section below. In the next episode, we will spawn enemies to the screen which will follow the player. They will have super smart AI, so don't miss that. And don't forget to hit that like button and smash subscribe, or I will find you.